with rivers of living water. Before our national, international evangelist Cruz Botello comes with our message, I want to share with you from Psalms 125, verses 1 and 2. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, and abideth forever. As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from henceforth, even forever. Brother Cruz. Good morning, afternoon, evening, whatever time it may be where you're at today. I'd like to greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's a blessing to be here. And uh, I'd like to just bless the Bishop of the House and our pastor, Pastor Joyce Jones and Bob Jones, and anybody who's watching today. Um, I'm going to go right to the Word this morning. Our Word is going to be found, the scriptures are going to be found in the book of Matthew. This morning we're in the book of Matthew, Matthew 16, and we're going to be starting to read in verse 13. The title for our message today is, You Better Recognize. You Better Recognize. So as the scripture reads here, reading out of the King James Version, Matthew 16, starting in verse 13. Just thank you, Lord, for this day. I thank you for this opportunity. I ask that you would open the hearts of those listeners, my God, that you would Open the hearts to their understanding, my God, and the revelation of your word will be deposited into their hearts and into their minds and into their spirits. In Jesus' name we pray. So verse 13, it says, When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that Thou art John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Peter. By, by Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So, as I said, the title of the sermon this morning is, You Had Better Recognize. If you notice, there was a question here that Jesus asked, and he says, Whom? Do men say that I am? And what happens here? Do they say that I'm John the Baptist, Elijah, and others? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the anointed one. The anointed one is Christ. So, like I said, we need to recognize who he is. Who is Christ? And what does he do? If we read on to the passages, it says here in verse 18, it says, And I say also unto thee, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That tells me that there's gates, that there's locks, that there's sections. Do you understand when Jesus was crucified, he bled and he died? He bled and he died. And by the remission of sin, by the shedding of his blood, he covered our sins. 
The Bible says in Revelation 1.18, it talks about somebody who was dead. It says, I am he that liveth and was dead. Some things have to die. And behold, I am alive. See, but the end is not when you die. Behold, I am alive, and I like this word, forevermore. It transcends death. It transcends what we feel and, and see and touch because life is just the beginning. It's forevermore, amen, comma. And I have the keys. Have the key. More than one. Some people like to hear things. Right? Have the keys. So if I have the keys, what do what do the keys do for me? They grant me access. They make it so that I can go into that place. It says here. And have the keys of hell and of death. Keys grant us and give us freedom. They give us freedom. They grant us access. They give us authority. And it says also here, it says, And I say unto thee, Thou, Peter, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys. So he went to hell. Jesus went to hell and snatched the keys and says he gives us those keys of heaven and whatever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So when we bind these things, we bind them in the authority and in the power of Christ Jesus. Because he went and he snatched those keys. Right? So this is why the devil fights us. He fights us because he knows that we have the keys that will keep him locked in that place of age forever. He's already been defeated. The keys have already been taken from him. And he wants to make us think that we have no power. When Jesus says, I give you the keys. They're yours. These keys are yours. What are those keys? It says here. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom. Keys of the kingdom. Did you know that the kingdom of heaven's power is greater than the kingdom of darkness? Do you know that light can dispel darkness? If this room was totally blacked out, pitched out, no windows, and you came in here with a match, you could find the switch. And if you flip the switch, you could light up the room. But the enemy wants to make you believe that because your little light doesn't shine bright enough, you're not going to be able to find the way. The kingdom of heaven lights the way. It makes a way where there seems to be no way. It wakes you up when it feels like you're in the middle of the darkest pit. The light of the world dwells inside of us. And he reminds us of that every day. That's why if you are being attacked, if, if, if those dark thoughts come to you. I just learned this maybe last week, two weeks ago. And it was on deliverance. I said, these pictures that come into your mind, death, lack, sickness, addictions, whatever comes into your mind comes into your mind in a picture. You know you're watching a picture right now. That's where we live in today. We watch pictures, videos, streaming, right? You take that thing into captivity. It sounds like you need to put some things in check. You bind that thing. That thought. 
you know what, I'm, I'm just going to go back to the way things used to be. Why is that thought in your mind? That's the enemy trying to remind you of how things used to be and how good it was. It wasn't that good. It wasn't that good. Why are you trying to make me feel like it was that good? Because that came with a lot of other stuff. Then we take the picture. This is the key, people. You take the picture that you're entertaining in your mind and you put that thought into subjection. The subjections are changed. You take that thing and you chain it. You bind it. In the name of Jesus. See, Jesus has the power and the authority to say, you know what? Since you bound it, I lock it. I lock it. It cannot come back into your mind again because you took the authority that I gave you and you chained that thing. You bound that thing. I've been in court. Maybe you, maybe many of you have never been in a jail. You know what they did when they arrest you? They put cuffs on you. Huh? You ain't going nowhere. I hear some of you laughing out there. They put some shackles on you. They take you to jail. They put you in a cell. They lock you in the cell until your court date. Then when they take you from the jail, I don't know how they do it now, it might be on video, but back in the day, they would literally take you from the jail and put shackles on you and put you in the back of the car, and then they take you to the courthouse in shackles to face the judge. What does that, what does that picture tell you? It tells you that we can bind the enemy because we have the authority given to us by God. We can bind him in the name of Jesus. The Bible says that he's our mediator. He's our go-between. He's the one that speaks for us. And he did not die in vain. He died so that we could have power. Because you know what? These thoughts are going to creep into your mind. And you have to have an avenue. You have to have a way to bind that thing in the name of Jesus. We do it because we understand that the finished work at the cross included going to hell and snatching the, the keys away. He had, to, he had to die, and that's what the enemy didn't expect. He thought the death would be the end. The death was not the end. The death was just the beginning. It says here, forevermore, amen. Behold, and behold, I am alive forevermore, amen. And I have the keys of hell, of death. So we have been delivered. We have been set free. We need to walk in the authority that God has given us. I know we celebrate Easter and resurrection, but there was something that happened after that. Pentecost. Pentecost. He came, see, Jesus had to come to earth, so he had to descend from heaven, right? To come and show us the way, and then he died at the cross, right? Had to descend again to go get the keys before he could ascend to heaven. Because he was giving us all authority and all power here on earth. He said, I came to give you everything that you need here on earth. And he says, when I leave, I'm going to send you the comforter. The Holy Spirit, which will guide you and lead you into all understanding. Sometimes we just haven't understood what he was trying to say. The Holy Spirit is here. It is here to help you. It is here to guide you. It is here to empower you. It is here to show you the way. We have to continue to walk in the authority that God has given us. Every day that we wake up, before we hit the ground, before our feet hit the ground, we give God thanks. I just thank you for a new day. I thank you for bringing me through the night. 
I give you praise before I, before even my feet hit the ground. I worship you today, my God. Don't you think that the enemy is going to be like, there he goes again. Man, I almost got him last night with those thoughts. But look at him. He gets back up. How does he do it? How does she do that? If I try to come at him at every angle, how does he? Because it is not I, but Christ in me. Is Christ in you? Christ in us. The hope of glory. See, my hope is in Christ the Lord. My hope is in the work finished at the cross. If it were not for Jesus, the Holy Spirit, where would we be today? In our strength. How far does your strength get you? How far does your education get you? How far does your money get you? How far? Not far enough. How, how far does our political system get us? How, how, how far does our medical knowledge get us? We're, sin, we're sitting under what's still considered a lockdown. Because throughout the whole world, Nobody has this answer. That's because they're looking in the wrong place. See, the enemy has been able to come into our minds and plant a seed of fear. And look how quickly that thing sprouted. Wow. Look, look how quickly that thing was reproduced. That we're all still sitting under this thing around the world. But we need to recognize that those are tactics from the enemy. And we need to put those things under subjection. That's a thought. But the TV said, and the media said, and, and the governor said, and the mayor said, and, oh, what did God say? What, what, what does God say? Who are you listening to? Who is the final authority? Did this pandemic void the word of God? No, it did not. No, it shall not. We stand on the infallible word of God. We stand because we believe that we have faith in what these words say. That there is life. Hmm, what did it say here? It says he's alive. He that liveth, I am he that liveth. Life speaks. I am he that liveth. You need to speak to yourself and say, I am he that liveth. We are they that liveth. Stop speaking death. Stop speaking those things that will take you down. Just remember this thing. God did not come in the form of man so that we can look at him on the cross. He's not on the cross. He's not hanging on the cross. The Bible says that he is alive and well today. And he has given us everything that we need at this moment. I know that there are a lot of people. I've been watching some of the news. There's a lot of people who are going through some very serious times in their, in their mind because of the fears that they are facing. I don't have a job. I haven't worked in two months. Or somebody in my family died because of this. This thing is real. So is Jesus. So is Jesus. I believe the reason the people in general fear so much is because they are not ready. They are not prepared. They are afraid of the truth. See, the Bible says that the truth shall set you free. The truth is, there is still a day for you today. There is still salvation for you today. There is still redemption for you today. There is still healing for you today. You can be made whole today. Just because it feels like it 
doesn't mean that it's true. Just because it looks like it doesn't mean that it's true. What is true is the Word of God. The Word of God does not change. I know this morning before this service, Bishop was saying that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's hard to see forever today sometimes. But if we see through the eyes of Christ Jesus, the Bible calls him the author and the finisher of our faith. That means that we finish because we keep our eyes on him. We don't put our eyes in the natural realm, but we put our eyes on him. That doesn't mean that we walk blindly either. We can understand that things are happening all around us. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but the Bible says that it shall not come near thee. That's why we need to know what the Bible says about those things that are going to come. But you know, so and so died. Mm -hmm. And you saw that so and so, yeah. But the Bible says that it's not going to come near me. It's not going to touch me. It's not going to touch my house. Either we apply the word. If we look at the Old Testament, let's look at what the blood did. Right? Passed over. Two words. It passed over. Death was there. Death was there. But it passed over. Why did it pass over? Because the Hebrew people understood that if they put the blood over, on the doorpost that the angel of death had to go. It had to pass over. There are things that we have to apply to our lives if we want that thing to pass over. Not that it's not going to be there. It could be right there. Hey, is firstborn home? Firstborn. Firstborn, I gotta take firstborn. Now. Sorry. There's blood on the door. You have to keep going. See, that gives us the power and the authority when we understand what the blood meant. See, the blood doesn't lose its power. Perhaps you believe that it's lost its power, but the blood has not lost its power. The blood speaks. It speaks today. It spoke back then in the Old Testament days. And that was just the blood of a lamb. And today we have the pure blood of Jesus that speaks with authority through us. So when we plead the blood of Jesus, if you can take that home, if you can't, if, you, if anything else you don't want to get from this message, take this home. Plead the blood of Jesus over you and your house, over your mind, over your emotions, over that sickness, and speak to it. Speak to that thing like you believe the word of God. The blood of Jesus has power. La sangre de Cristo tiene poder. La sangre de Cristo tiene poder. The blood of Jesus has power today to save, heal, and deliver. The blood speaks. The blood speaks. The blood speaks today. On this day, I just want to, again, give you an opportunity to give your heart to the Lord. Perhaps you may be in that place where things have been knocking at your door and telling you that it's it, that's the end, that you won't see another good day. But Jesus says that I am alive, that you are alive. And we can come alive in Christ Jesus.
this morning, I just want to lead you into a prayer. We just thank you, my God. We thank you, Lord, for your son and the finished work at the cross. We thank you, my God, that you sent your son to die for us, my God, that he so, you so loved us that you sent your son to die for us on that cross. But not only did he die, my God, but he resurrected with power, with authority, my God. And this morning, we just come to you in faith believing, my God, that you can make us whole again. You can make us new again. That you are the way. You are the salvation to our lives. We believe, my God, that you sent your son and he died on that cross and rose so that we could be saved. And today, my God, we just give you our lives. We turn over all, my God, our sins that we understand that he can wash us white as snow. And from this point forward, my God, we just turn our lives to you and we ask you to lead us and be Lord. Be Lord in our lives. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. If you enjoyed this message and you viewed us on Facebook, then friend us. If you viewed it on YouTube, then subscribe to our channel and you'll be notified when we post again. If you have a prayer request that you would like placed on our prayer cross or you would have a, like a prayer cloth, please contact us by writing to Post Office Box 1323, Fremont, Ohio, 43420. We look forward to hearing from you, and remember, there is no God like our God nowhere.